What happens when you visit a web page? Let's say you want to access Ripley.com to execute some code of yours while using the browser rather than having to fire up an ID to do so. First, you type www.ripley.com into the address bar, then you hit enter. Your browser connects to a server called DNS. So, what's a DNS? DNS stands for Domain Name System. DNS is a database that maintains the name of the website and the particular IP address it links to. In general, every single URL on the internet has a unique IP address assigned to it. But this may not apply in some cases if we're talking about shared hosting, for example. For instance, www.google.com has an IP address of 216.58.198.68. So if you want to access google.com, you can simply type http colon slash slash 216.58.198.68 into the address bar of the browser. In a nutshell, a DNS is a list of URLs and their corresponding IP addresses. It was meant to work this way to make it human friendly. Because remembering the name of a website using URL is much more easier than remembering a sequence of different numbers. Thus, accessing a website via URL is much easier than remembering and typing the exact IP address of a website. Not to mention how many websites are there and how hard it is to remember every single IP address. So again, your browser connects to a server called DNS and asks, Hey, I want to know what's the IP address for this domain www.ripley.com, the DNS gives back the corresponding IP address to ripley.com. Let's say it gives back this address, 104.18.12.38. Then the browser will initiate a connection with a server that matches the IP address. To establish this connection, the browser uses what we call Internet Protocol. The most common one is TCP, used for many HTTP requests. Okay, so to establish a connection between the browser and the server, a TCP connection is required. So what happens next is a process called TCP IP three-way handshake. In other words, this is a three-step process. First, the browser sends a SIM packet which stands for synchronize to the server over the internet asking if a new connection is open. Second, if the server has open ports that can accept and initiate connections, generally that happens on port 80, then it responds with an acknowledgement of the SIM packet via SIN slash ACK packet. Third, the browser will receive the sin slash ACK packet from the server and will acknowledge it by sending an ACK packet. Okay, now that the TCP connection has been established, the browser sends a GET request to the web server asking for the www.ripple.com webpage. The server, which contains a web server that could be an Apache, Nginx, Cloudflare, or something else, the web server is responsible for receiving that request to pass it over to a request handler that will read the request and check what's requested, then generate a response in a particular format, generally HTML. Once the server is done reading and has generated a response containing the web page requested by the browser, now it's time to send it back. Then it's up to the browser to display the HTML content on the screen. 